Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Baggage Claim, A Journey Through Mental Illness. I'm Katrina. I'm Julia, and this is a show about living with mental, with dealing with your mental health in today's society. Tonight's episode is about forgiveness. And I'm Mel, and we are here every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And just so we can remind you guys, we are mental health patients and not mental health experts. So if you are feeling like the content that we are doing is triggering you in some way or you need to reach out to somebody, check the description box below and go ahead and reach out to a counselor or text the text line. <laughs> Perfect. Thank Do you, Mel. Yeah. So forgiveness. Um, yeah, forgiveness. What I found interesting about forgiveness is I really, when we were doing this show, like always, um, didn't think I would have anything to talk about or anything to say. But boy, did that that change after thinking about it um, over the week. And also, I think what I've come to realize is like when we looked up forgiveness and kind of we're moving all around today. I know. I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm playing producer today, I everyone. Like so get your get your hold on to your butts, everybody. <laughs> um, I just you know I just wanted to say when we did our research for this episode, we all found different ways um, about or to learn how to forgive, which is mm -hmm. super interesting to me. Um, and I'm kind of ready to dive in. Are you guys? I'm yeah, ready to dive in. Right. And I like us this way. I'm going this way. Yes, the definition. Because yeah, we need so to define things. Let's have a baseline understanding. Forgiveness is often psychologically defined as a conscious, deliberate decision to let go of feelings of anger, resentment, and retribution towards someone who you believe has wronged you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. So I think that's a pretty good definition. Are there anything, yes. any, is there anything about that definition that jumps out at you guys? It's the whether or not they deserve it portion of it for forgiveness mm -hmm. always yeah. for me. I have some uh, interesting stories about forgiveness and a lot of the, I'm, the forgiving yourself section here is going to be something really interesting for me because I know that Julia has got a lot of stuff to talk about with it. And so I don't want to jump too far ahead, but understanding that forgiveness isn't just about like it's about you and the person that you're forgiving and you know that you, sometimes you have to be able to forgive a person to gosh we're gonna get deep in the weeds here too early sometimes you have to be able to forgive a person to live a good life to feel okay with yourself and so it's mm -hmm. like they may not do you know but also too we need to be careful because there's some people who are unforgivable <laughs> Agree. Agree. Well, what about when that? Well, what jumps out at me um, in that definition is the deliberate decision, because what I always forget and need to remember is that forgiveness is a choice. So, like you were saying, Mel, like some people are unforgivable. I mean, it's up to you to make that decision, yeah. and if you're willing to choose to forgive or not, knowing that forgiveness can lead to many benefits, mental and physical. Um, and that it's really, you know, for you, the person doing the forgiving, not so much for the other person, but still knowing that you still have a choice and you can choose not to forgive if you want to, that choice is always there. So that always jumps out at me. But I think that is like a really important part because I don't think everything and everyone is forgivable. Um, and Mel made a really good point in that. There's such a, I think we'll get into the weeds, but um, yeah, there's certain situations that maybe you choose to forgive because it's going to do A, B, and C, right? Um, but then there's other situations that I can think of that I, I really don't want to get into that are just really unforgivable. And you make that choice is important. Yeah, it's up to each individual. Mm -hmm. Because I guess the whole thing is like, it's a, about allowing someone to have power over you that they, they don't, that they, I mean, it's something that you can control, allowing a person to have control over you that they don't deserve, nor um, you don't have to give it to them. There's a lot of things that we are, that are not in control of, especially with mental illness. Like there's a lot of things that don't belong to us and there's nothing we can do about it and we have to manage it. But saying, I forgive you, takes power away from somebody potentially like a, you know, unforgivable. But by me saying that a lot of that, I've given them power by making them unforgivable. Whereas if I just say, you know what, I've got to let this go. 
that gives you that comfort of saying like I've given I've I've taken some power that I have in the existential universe back from the you know something external that I can actually control and so that's I've had to learn about that a lot in my life because of the things that have gone on and so it is it's very much and even now like my jump to some of people are unforgivable and it's really like now you're giving that that existential power to something that you could actually own for yours and not you know because we have so little power over some of it well it's also interesting that a lot of times what we're how we feel um the 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 forgiving is like getting rid of to me like anger or Mm -hmm. resentment or something built up that's constantly on my mind that you know it's something i'm always thinking about but that act of forgiving it kind of gets rid of that right that that overwhelming release absolutely absolutely yeah well what about when that other person who needs forgiving is yourself it can be challenging to forgive others for wrongs they have done us and hurts they have caused us, but it can be even more difficult to forgive yourself. Well, I think forgiving yourself, you kind of have to look at yourself and say, like, what am I forgiving first? And that's maybe the most difficult thing is just looking in the mirror, right? Yeah. Um, so to me, that's, that's that first step is the most difficult. When you really love someone, is, don't you find it easier to forgive them? Sometimes a little, oh, yeah. even a little well, too easy. Many, many of us don't have that same loving, supportive relationship with ourselves. You know, we're much more critical of ourselves than we are of others. And we may, um, you know, cut some slack for others where we won't even fudge a little for ourselves. Do you guys I find mean, that to be true? Yes, That's all really the time. Funny. I mean... All the time, no, where it's kind of ridiculous, you know, and you mm-hmm. have to tell yourself, like, wait a second, like, a lot of it, mine is like, I'm sorry, Mel, I'm totally taking over, but I'm going to let you speak. Um, it's like a lot of it it's is all you, um, you know. um, saying, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know that that's, I don't know if that can be mixed in with forgiveness, but that constant need um, to apologize and, and, think that I did something wrong. Yeah, because you don't have a way to parse it out. And so what ends up happening is that, um, I think that I was talking to somebody recently about this is basically the idea is that you maybe lived in a household or were around people for a period of your life that were easily upset by things. And so you feel the need to be overly, you know, apologetic about things because you don't want to upset anybody. You don't want to upset them. And so, so you, and you start to take blame on yourself that you shouldn't be taking on yourself for something that is a, it's an ambiguous, like there's no reality. It's not a tangible emotion. It's that you're just worried about upsetting that person. And so you become hyper apologetic and then you start to conflate like what apologies, like what forgiveness and apologizing are because they are two different being able to forgive someone or yourself for larger things is a lot different than apologizing all the time people Mm -hmm. say i'm sorry randomly and emptily all the time but are they really sorry do they really or you know is it coming from a place like what you're talking about which i also do sorry 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 just because easily upset yeah, it's like, but it's also that need to have like perfection and and um, and to me that is about forgiving because we need to forgive ourselves a little bit more, right? Like we need to like let go of some things, um, but that's really hard to do. And yeah, Joe I is think join the too. chat real quick before you jump here. I'm gonna. Joseph has joined the chat, ladies, so we need to say hello to him and our other viewers this evening. Hi, Joseph. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Common Club. And thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to jump right off there. And I just wanted to jump that in there. I think, too, that um, when we're talking about forgiving ourselves, a lot of times these things that we have done, we identify with them so much that it's almost like they're a part of ourselves. And so... 
to forgive ourselves, it's like to have that release, it's like we're cutting off a part of ourselves, like severing our own tail. Um, and so it becomes really challenging to do because we feel so um, tightly bound to these things that we have done because that's who we were, that's who we were in that moment. And so we feel like we're getting rid of that person who we were in that moment that did that thing. Yeah. It's like we're axing that person. Do you guys, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Just thinking about all those times. <laughs> imagine, okay, for everyone watching, um, imagine that you've done something. Um, maybe you didn't show up for someone who needed you, or you um, cheated on a significant other, or you um, spread gossip, vicious gossip about someone behind their back or, or spilled a secret that wasn't yours to share or um, deliberately caused pain to someone. Um, and now you feel like garbage. You're, there's a pit in your stomach and you are, um, your, your mind won't stop replaying the situation over and over and over again. And um, you, you feel like the worst person in the world. Like you don't know if you'll ever be able to forgive yourself. You know, we've all been there, haven't we, ladies? We've yes. all been there. Yes. Oh, yes. And the thing is that, um, you know, contrary to popular belief, wink, um, <laughs> stewing in remorse is not actually an effective coping strategy. What? I no, know. Yes. I know. Of course it is. Okay. I've been doing this all wrong. All wrong. Oh. So we have to find a way to another way and that way is through forgiveness but how do we forgive well i think that um we all have come up the three of us have come up with different roadmaps for forgiveness and we're going to share some of those with you as far as yeah. some ideas that we have and am i doing the video now no not the not video the, you guys hang i take the video you guys we'll do <laughs> um but you can take the banner now Okay, right. so <laughs> um, I'm going to start. I, mine comes from a Berkeley article, a uh, science article. It's called Eight Keys uh, to, Forgiving, to Forgiveness, and it's by Robert and Wright. Oh, wait, I got this. I am the best. Here we go. Oh, you have it? I have it. Let's see our, if she can bring it up. Let's see. Um, but I'll go ahead and get started. So – the first one is to know what forgiveness is and why it matters. I think we really did do a good job of talking about this very topic. Um, so I'm not going to go into more detail about it. Um, become forgivingly fit. So this one was interesting to me because one. you can start becoming more fit by making a commitment to do no harm. So in other words, making a conscious effort not to talk disparagingly disparagingly about those who have hurt you, et cetera, et cetera. I really, really like that, um, that point. Uh, I think, I don't know if you guys have, but I have of course been in a situation where I am just talking absolute shit right. Right, about somebody um, in a bad way. And it doesn't help me because <laughs> I'm obsessing over it. And it, what is it doing to the other person? So I really like that one. Um, Address your inner pain. Develop a forgiving mind through empathy. Um, find meaning in your suffering. Forgiveness is hard. Call upon your strengths. Um, you know, it's okay to be angry. Uh, there is no timeline for forgiveness, right? It's kind of at your own. Here we go. Um, forgive yourself, of course, as we just talked about. Develop a giving heart. So make room in your heart, um, just like we exercise. Um, you know, make room in your heart to think about those things every day, um, about changing what you want or what, what, is, uh, what is good. So those are the ones I found um, most interesting, and that's why I kind of chose this article to highlight. Um, 
you know, we personal. have a Discord now. So if you guys want to jump in our public Discord and you're interested in some of the links to some of these articles, just give us a shout in the public Discord. And we did, I think Katrina said she added the link to it because some people had asked last week. So if you guys yeah. like it, it you take a look at one of these things that we're showing on the thing and you want to see it, give us a shout and we'll try and uh, make sure because we keep a little, we make notes. I, I know that we're like so overly polished and professional here, but <laughs> we actually do keep notes. And <laughs> yeah, so I really liked this article. I got a lot out of it. Um, you know, I didn't think that I was going to come to the table today with like much to say, like I said earlier. And um, going back through this article and thinking about what we are going to talk about today kind of made me remember things that I didn't like, you know, I have a lot of family history that I've had to forgive um, and move on from and still have a relationship with people in my family um, that pro I probably shouldn't, right? They're not really the best people, but I've had to forgive. And, and for some reason, that's also kind of forgetting um, for me anyway. Uh, and it really took this episode to remember what had happened and, and why this was the case and why I made the choices I did. Um, so it was really eye opening for me. That's awesome, Katrina. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I agree with you. Sometimes I think we can equate forgiving with forgetting sometimes, but I don't think yeah. it has to mean that. Of course I think not. That we can move on, but still remember was done to us but i think sometimes we think it means we have to just forget about it like it never happened um and, and kind of you do like after a certain amount of time right like things aren't as blatantly in your face as they were before or you're not thinking about them all the time because you've gone through that act of forgiving um it, it isn't on your mind all the yeah, time. time heals heals all wounds absolutely because you I, I didn't, before we move on, I want to plug since Mel plugged the Discord. We also have these awesome new pins that are baggage claim. They say baggage claim, um, a journey through mental illness. And if you get on our Discord and you say baggage claim, we will send these one to you. So oh, oh. Wow. they're really cute. Here, and I'm going to show they're one. They're super cute. Mel. So this is one that I can relate to in some ways. Uh, Joseph says, uh, I understand, Katrina, I haven't spoken to my pops in five years. Yeah, um, I mean, it's I that's have so hard. a very distant relationship with my mother. And unfortunately for my sister and I, you know, that's our single, that's our only parent. Um, we lost my dad when I was, you know, that's 20 years ago now. And so it's difficult sometimes. But also we've, in a ways, we've had to learn and we've done it at our own separate times, had to learn to be okay with what relationship we have with my mother and to put that where it belongs and, and to, it's, you know, the, the idea is that um, forgiving means like understanding what a person is capable of and where they can meet you in their mm -hmm. way. So for us, it's that, you know, there's not, I don't have hatred. I don't have anger anymore. I have sort of forgive. It's the, you know, what's past is past. And those things, I, I have to forgive them because I'm here right now at this moment, moving from here forward. And so hopefully we have a chance to have a, a relationship sometime in the future, but under the current circumstances, I've had to accept where my mother and I are in our lives and what that looks like and be okay with that and be okay with myself being okay with that because we want our parents and our siblings and the people that we're closest to biologically to be that sort of idolized thing that they put out in the stories where it's like, yay, family's awesome and all these things. But that's just not how it is realistically for everybody. Everybody's family is different. Everybody's relationships with their members of their family are different. So you know, I th but sorry, that's really important that like people know you can make your family, right? Mm -hmm. I tell that to my friends all the time. Like Chosen family. it's your choice, you know? Right. And you it's can be choice. okay with making that choice. Yeah. And that's for me, that's somewhere that I've had to be okay with and forgive myself the idea that, you know, yeah, it's okay that most of your family, the people you consider your brothers and sisters and your, the, your fam 
are not blood related to you in any way, shape or form. But the people that I hold closest to my heart, that I talk to every day, that I get up and, and you know, that we've traveled across like continents in the world for, are a bunch of weirdos in like four different locations who I love like brothers and it's, and they're my family. But also that has made me a better person once I was allowed myself to be cool with that being okay with choosing your family and that being okay, they uh, there's that saying, blood is thicker than water, and people are like, oh, whatever. That's actually been messed up. It, it actually is that the uh, blood of uh, battle is thicker than the blood of the womb. And so it was a warrior saying that said that the people that you bled with in battle were the ones that you were the closest with. And so I've always kind of used that as a like weird in my brain is like, these are the people that have stayed in hospital rooms with me or, you know, come and help me from across the nation when in a time of need or something like that. And that's not blood. That's, you know, it doesn't take a blood relative for something like that to happen. The people that mean the most, but you have to, for me, I, there was a lot of being okay with, having a family that I picked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I love. Yeah. I say, I, I, my story is, um, you know, I have somebody in my family who's really, really difficult and wouldn't be around my stepmother and it's just not, not the best person. So my husband and I decided to just get married in the courthouse, but we went on our honeymoon with my family. Like we went with my best, our best friends and it was just amazing, right? Like that's, that was the any that was the experience I wanted over anything else to be with those people, yeah. um, and that was a choice I made and we made together. And um, it's okay to do that for sure. Yeah, I like yeah. that. And I don't think that some of my family members would forgive me making that choice, but that's and that's, that's your choice, you right? Know? And yeah. that is something I think that's where they intersect and interplay with each other is that because that yeah. a lot of guilt, especially from I mean, my background is a lot of guilt comes from that. But then to be like, no, 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 no. You don't get to take the time with these awesome people away from me feeling guilty about being with them. That's just not a thing. Sorry. Yeah, So exactly. Exactly. Well, I think especially when it comes to forgiving yourself, there can be, you just brought up guilt and there can be so much guilt and shame around things that we've done that we don't feel like we can forgive ourselves for. So um, one of the things that it's important to remember is that it's okay to feel guilty. You know, every emotion that we experience serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. Happiness happiness is there to tell us that we should connect with people and share things. And, you know, um, um, Sadness informs us that we've lost something. And, um, you know, the purpose of guilt is to tell us that we did something that was out of line with our beliefs and values. And so um, we, it's so guilt serves a purpose, an important purpose. Shame does not serve much of a purpose, but shame is where you tell yourself that you're worthless, that you don't deserve to be here. Um, Shame you to tell yourself that you're a bad person, you'll never get better. Guilt is feeling remorse for something that you did that was out of line with your beliefs or values. Um, so that's one important thing. Um, another hey guys, thing. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> oh. Another thing is to um, admit that you've messed up. That is one of the oh. hardest parts for some people is the admitting yeah. that you've messed up. Um, mm -hmm. Because the denial is how people get themselves into even deeper trouble. Um, yeah. because ignoring a problem, of course, does not make it go away, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have no problems. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're just not going to talk about it. It's fine. But one way, positive way of looking at it is a way to claim your mistakes is to say that they're part of your evolution towards becoming a better person. So you're not there yet, but you're, you're getting there. And so you're making these mistakes along the way. So that's one way to kind of reframe um, these things and be able to come clean about them. Um, and then you need to apologize to anyone that you may have hurt. That can be tricky. Do you guys, what do you guys experience with apologizing? Do you feel like that's been easy for you to do or difficult for you to do? Um, it depends on the, like on the situation. Cause sometimes I'm only apologizing and saying, I'm sorry. But like yeah. other times I'm like, Nope, I was right. <laughs> 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 
And, um, you know, sometimes you may want to make an amends. An amends goes further than a, an apology. Um, an amends is where you seek to right the wrong by actually changing behavior in the future. So going forward, you're going to do things differently, um, which, of course, takes a lot of effort. So mm. all these things aren't easy. No. It's, um, you've got to, like, really so have self-control and, like, want to get better and get to that point. I think admitting yeah. you've messed up and then apologizing, I think those two things, because they are such distinct steps, are mm -hmm. two really hard things for me. And mm -hmm. so because I don't like, no one likes being wrong or admitting that they, but I found that um, because I have a history, you know, there's a lot of people in my life that because they would not own up to things, it was like destructive to our relationship. And so, like you said, Katrina, I went the opposite direction where you get counter where you go so extremely to the other end where you're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or you're unwilling to admit that you're wrong. But for me, it's like, it's like, I know that I was wrong. That's the part that I'm like, it's the next step. It's the apology part. Because I can totally be like, I was totally wrong right there. It, but, but to have to like, to have you to know, humble yourself. Yeah. And yeah. look someone but, in the eye and be not like, you know, I'm sorry you took it that way. Or I'm because there's like ways to apologize and then there's ways to actually ask for forgiveness. Well, I was just going to say, do you guys even feel like apologies are like something that people really take seriously? Like, honestly, like, <laughs> like when you say I'm sorry and the other person's like, I don't know. Hmm, I haven't really thought about it. It's an interesting question. And I, I say that because when someone apologizes to me, I try to acknowledge them because I feel as though it takes, It's for me, it's difficult to apologize. So if someone comes to me and says, yeah. I'm really sorry, I did that. I like to try and stop myself and actually acknowledge it. It's like when someone says thank you and you say you're welcome and you have both made an effort to acknowledge one another in whatever has been done. And people think that that, that might sound petty but it makes a big difference in people's lives because when you're speaking to somebody purposefully and saying, you know, I acknowledge what you did and thank you for acknowledging <laughs> that. I mean, those kind of exchanges. So, but you can tell when somebody's not really apologizing. And I think that's why we're all very dismissive of it because I think that a lot of us feel as though, oh, I'm sorry you took it that way, or I'm sorry it didn't, I didn't mean for it to come off that way. That's not necessarily an apology. An apology more in my opinion, would be something along the lines of, you know, I did not mean to, I didn't mean to come off as a dick to you. <laughs> that, was, that was never my intent. And if I did, I actually am genuinely sorry because that wasn't what I was trying to accomplish. But that takes like thought and effort. So I think that's why a lot of, a lot of apologies are dismissed is because I don't think that people give what, I guess, thoughtful apologies. They're just mm -hmm. like, I'm, 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 you know, I'm sorry you screwed. I, I'm sorry I screwed that up for you, or what? I don't know. Just it's passive aggressive apologizing seems like a popular way of doing business in the greater world. Mm -hmm. My experience. Yeah, I think One that's thing, why I asked that question because I, you think you're right. Yeah, I agree. Um, one thing, if you're having trouble forgiving yourself, um, one thing that you can do is to, this is just an exercise you can do by yourself, is to visualize forgiveness. So you can imagine what forgiveness would feel like, like what it would feel like in your body, what it mm -hmm. would look like, like what would happen if you forgave yourself and visualize it all. And, um, you know, in, in as great a detail as you can, and then uh, that can help you sort of get on that path to actually taking the steps in real life. If you can, if you can see it in your mind's eye, you can make it happen. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes, I, I, but th I feel like this is the case with like so many things in mental health, in life in general. Like you really have to take control and like take the lead um, in these situations, right? Like yeah. it's um, it's like exercising or meditation and yoga. It's something that you need to do consistently, um, you know, to be healthy. 
Well, you have to practice. And that's my, ha- and I say that because that's hard for me. Like that is so freaking hard. Well, because you have to get good at it. And the only way you get good at anything is to practice. practice. And the only way to practice is to actually acknowledge those moments when you have them. And it's a slow process. So you don't ever, nobody's mm-hmm. ever going to wake up tomorrow and be like, I am perfect at apologizing and forgiving everyone. Like, if it were that easy, I don't think that the three of us would need to be here. And, you know. <laughs> and we need to be here. We need to be yes, here. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, another important thing to do when you're on this sort of path to forgiveness is to learn from your mistake, which um, seems like it should be obvious, but it's easier said than done. Um, but, you know, what's the point of going through this apology and everything if you're not going to learn from your mistake and do better next time? So, um, you know, so one thing you can do is ask yourself, why did this action feel okay in this moment? And sort of answer that for yourself so that you can see what you would change. Yeah, I mean, another thing that um, takes off discipline and and hard work. You're like that, and I'm yeah. not having any of that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to take care of yourself yeah. mentally and physically. Nope, I'm um, not doing it. Oh, my bad. Ignore my face. Because guilt is such a visceral feeling, it can manifest in all sorts of painful ways. So if you, this is why it's important to forgive. If you carry the guilt and shame too long, it can cause distance in your relationships with other people. And it can begin to alter your perception of yourself and affect your self-esteem and also have significant impact on your mental and physical health. Um, mentally, it can cause depression and anxiety and, um, Physically, signs of guilt can manifest similar to signs of anxiety. Like IBS. And IBS. Yeah, um, you can have IBS, muscle tension, headaches, mm-hmm. sleep issues, lack mm-hmm. of focus. You could have heart issues. I mean, they can manifest in all sorts of ways. And this has all been, you know, scientifically proven. Um, Take so, our word for it. Yeah, I said it, so it's true. <laughs> I am scientifically proven to uh, be very, very guilty of guilt and the the uh, emotional effect it has. That's a bad one for me. That's one yeah. of my like red flag zones for uh, having, you know, dealt with the things that, uh, you know, I wasn't around when my dad passed away, him and I were fighting. And in fairness, I was like 20 years old and we were perpetually fighting because that was how we talked to each other. But when something terrible happens, you immediately, and especially, at, you know, it was very sudden. So it took me a long time. And even now to, to you know, it's still part of what I manage on a daily basis. But yeah. it's like, you can't know that something that catastrophic is going to happen. And to to spend decades afterwards blaming yourself for the one you know bad timed thing out of millions of bad timed things is silly but it's still something that i carry with me and have had to work on and it definitely is something that is part of my mental health therapy stuff and it was something i had to unwind myself from in the first place when i first started getting treatment because you basically need someone to come in and intervene with with your brain and say hey stop that's not normal like this was just bad timing like the universe is full of bad timing and you have to understand how to be healthy now but that's a big i mean tiny little things that make a giant thing and i think self-forgiveness that's where my self-forgiveness issues constantly happen where it's like you know i like you know can't go to bed angry because what if something terrible happens or can't like oh my god the person left and i was arguing with them. And then I have to like text them like three seconds later and be like, I I don't hate you because you know, what if something, and it's like, so you get trauma from it and it's difficult. So it's, it's a tough one. I I definitely can relate to that portion. Yeah. For me, um, I, when I went missing, um, I, still have it to this day, haven't been able to forgive myself for that because I, um, because of what I put my family and friends through and um, what I put my dog through out there on the streets with me. And, um, you know, I was in a psychotic state, but as many times as I tell myself that, I still haven't been able to let go of the fact that I, it was still me who did those things. But it and, wasn't you, but it wasn't you. 
And I, um, so that's, that's my struggle to forgive myself for that. Um, and for, for basically altering the course of my life in ways that I wouldn't have chosen to alter it in. I, I forever blame myself for that. And, um, Feel like I ruin I ruin things, everything. Um, but it's so. It is something that you can't. I mean, you feel it no matter what. It's like it isn't you, but it lives in you, and it's like yeah. this weird monster thing that's a part of you that could. It's. I mean, you know, it's difficult because like I have a more physical like thing that I can relate it to, where like seizures some of my seizures have come out of nowhere and you just, and you lose this part of yourself. And I think that a lot of mental health can be related to that because it's this thing that comes out of you and it lives in you somehow and needs to be controlled and medicated and all of these things. And, you know, we talk about, it's not part of you. It's not part of you or it's, it doesn't, don't let it define you versus the fact, but we still know that it's in us and it lives there and that it can be just as terrifying. And then you get to the place where like Julia's talking about where it's like, you know, I can't forgive myself for that. And yeah, that constant self flagellation. Mm -hmm. so, and that's the mm -hmm. only way that we can do that is like, I mean, having these conversations, I know I say right. it every week, but this is where it starts. And like, thank you for sharing. Because you, yeah, yeah, seriously, Julia, that's really that's important stuff. I mean, that's huge. And I just want to give you a hug. And I like want you like to know it's okay. Like, everything's okay. And Thanks, you're okay. Katrina. And your family's okay. And Miss Cindy Crawford is okay. And you are loved. She's doing good. Okay? You're loved. Thanks, ladies. Uh, <laughs> and you tapped that out. That's good. Like, you had yeah. the wherewithal in the universe to, like, you had those cares. And you have those cares. I think that if you weren't somebody that had empathy and compassion, like you just wouldn't care about that. So the, your inability to forgive yourself is also sort of a like, wow, that's a really great person. They're, they're still yeah. taking so much on their self that they didn't, they long after that feeling has passed for some of the other people, potentially you're still like, I never want to make those people feel that way again. And that's, I, I kind of like that's what you put in your little like box and go this is what I'm aiming for so that I don't go back to that place or those times is that I have all these other things like you know meeting you guys or having my friends that I've had over the last several years or whatever because I chose something better and was able to mm -hmm. get through that and not a, not everyone has that moment and not everybody has the support that we've had so you know it is important to move on though, because I'm like tethered to this event right now that I haven't freed myself from these shackles basically. Well, and for you, for someone to be like not forgiving of themselves, I've never seen somebody, and I'm gonna be honest with you in the audience, work so hard on their mental health ever. Yeah. Ever. I mean, and that is a step. You might not know it, but that's a big step. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Another um, thing to remember on the road to self forgiveness, and this ties into what we were just talking about, is to be patient. And this is one of the hardest parts, too. To be patient. Because um, often we feel embarrassed and guilty about our actions, and we want everything to go back to normal as soon as possible, whatever normal is. Um, especially if we've hurt people, we want to move past that as quickly as we can. But you can't rush your own feelings and you certainly can't make anyone else change theirs. Um, so, you know, you have to sort of do this at your own pace. So I'm, you know, maybe, maybe I'm on a very slow path to forgiveness. Take time. <laughs> I'm taking your journey. journey. That's okay. That's it. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, please. I was just going to say, wait into kind of forgiving others. But if you're, please, if there's more. Yeah, there is. Um, don't yes. try to change other people. Um, you know, other people's opinions only holds so much weight. And that's a hard thing to mm -hmm. remember. It's a hard thing to put into practice. But it's true. Um, you know, other people's opinions don't define you. Um, and um, another thing is that social media, we've been talking a lot about social media lately. But um, social media 
puts out this idea that we should expect perfection of ourselves and that anything else is just like abject failure um, and deserves to be shamed. And when we see this on a daily basis, it's constantly being reinforced. Um, but the truth is everyone makes mistakes, every single person, whether they're bad judgment calls or accidents or deliberate, whatever they are, every single person makes mistakes. Um, so we need to learn how to process these feelings of guilt and, and move through them um, because this is something we're gonna be facing our entire lives. So I think that's important to remember is this doesn't just stop one day. Like this is exactly. a daily process forever. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, working on our mental health is a constant deal. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, though, because we can That's learn. Why we're here every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Exactly. Eastern. Check right us now. out. <laughs> like, subscribe, and comment. <laughs> yep. <sighs> oh, that was point. really good, Julia. Thank you. Yeah, those are just some ways that um, you can work on self forgiveness. Um, yeah. There's also, um, if you're struggling to remember what to do, there's the four R's of self-forgiveness, which are um, responsibility, remorse, restoration, and renewal. So you accept responsibility for doing the action that you did. Um, and then express remorse is apologizing, you're making amends, like we said. Restoration is, um, restoration is, what is restoration? Um, I think just um, just um, making a living amends, like how you're gonna live moving forward. And then renewal is um, learning to grow as a person from the experience. That makes sense. That's really good. That's really important. Taking all that stuff that you did on all that hard work and putting it towards moving forward and trying to mm -hmm. like do a little better every time. Exactly. Thank you, Julia. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, sure, guys. Thank you so much. I was just going to talk about um, forgiving others really quickly. I don't have an article. Um, I think really step one is forgiving yourself. Um, I think that's a big part of it. And, um, yeah, I've had a lot of experience with forgiving others and the fact that my mother passed away when I was really young. I think I've said that before. And what that caused in my family and the family dynamics was that shit insane. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's been, there's ha had to have been a lot of forgiveness, a lot of looking at who these people are. And I say these people, my family, who they are, where they've come from, their side of the story, right? It's like putting a story together, I feel like is what I had to go through. Um, to get past this point of um, hatred. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, because that's the empathy yeah. piece. I think that it's really interesting because where Julia was talking about earlier and even in your, like in all the roadmaps, they talk about, you know, you have to have a sense of empathy. You have to be able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. So as much as your situation is hurtful and painful you also have to say okay well if i'm in this much pain also what kind of pain is this other person in and again that's deliberate action that we have to take as people but it's way more worth it i think than sort of traveling through space and time with this just like i don't give a damn about anybody sort of attitude that we see that's not healthy for us as a population like i don't think that people are generally happy that way and I think a lot of times people struggle because they know how hard it is to put themselves in other people's shoes because they know how much feeling they'll have to do when that happens. But I think when we do do that and when you are able to say those things and do those things, you are able to make those, you know, forgiveness moves that you were talking about where you so that like, like you, I mean, hatred is... <laughs> Believe me, I get angry and I want to throw things. And I think I told you guys that even I was like angry at my dad for dying. I mean, as if that's like a normal thing. And I, and I know that that is a normal piece of grief. But and then I get into this thing where I'm like, how could you think that about a dead person? And then you have to forgive yourself for those things. So it's that 
that thing I think that keeps us like, so we have to make a conscious decision. Do we want to live sort of an empty life and be scared and angry and, you know, have a chip on our shoulder all the time? Or do we want to put ourselves in each other's shoes a little bit and be empathetic to each other and feel a little extra hurt than the hurt that we already have on our own so that we can be better and, you know, make amends with each other? Or do we just kind of want to be a narcissistic dick traveling through the world saying F everybody? Yeah. <laughs> I, and I think that that was so freaking good, Mel. Like what you just said was amazing. I think it summed up the show like incredibly. Um, and it's funny because like my family is the narcissistic type of family. Um, so it's like, how do you forgive that? <laughs> and that's a whole other process. Yeah. And you have to learn. It's I think as someone, I think we have some things in common just from given our conversations about some of these things. And it's about like identifying those things in yourself and making sure that you're aware of those yeah. things and that you don't allow yourself to fall into that trap as much as possible. I mean, nobody's infallible. And again, mental illness is such that we have to do this work every day all the time. But again, we have like, you know, the more you get friends. The more you get therapy, the more you get things, you have more to keep you in check and the more community you build around you, it makes it, it's never gonna be easy, but it certainly makes it easier when you have like a group of like a web of people around you going, don't feel like that right now. That's dangerous. We all know where that leads. Yeah. Before we get too far into forgiving others, why don't we play that video? Yes, video. I am gonna do this. And I'm gonna get it right, dang it. Okay, I messed it you up. You can already. do it, Mel. We got this. Mel's producing for the first time tonight, everybody. Just a big round of applause. All right, here we go. I think that there's even audio on it. Burr. Burr. Wait, wait for it. You know, forgiveness is so important. And it's Turn up a little bit. Recognize and acknowledge that forgiveness is for the person forgiving. It's not for the other person that is being forgiven. It's for the person that is doing the forgiving. And that's where the benefit is. You guys hear okay? Because what you're doing, mm -hmm. you're, you're releasing locked, stuck energy that is there in, in, in either regrets or resentments or something you're holding against somebody else, or maybe the person that you need to forgive is yourself. And, and, and you say, well, I can't forgive myself because it was just too horrendous, the thing that I did. Well, what you're doing is you are stuck in that energy. And if you want to be successful, if you want to be happy, if you want to be at peace, if you want to live your destiny and if you want to help people then you want to get rid of stuck energy and i have a saying as you know well and i repeat it many times and that is that our success helps many people and our failure helps no one and it is our duty and responsibility to be successful how can you be successful in your life if you're stuck with this old energy so work with forgiveness. Forgive yourself for whatever it is you're holding against yourself. Forgive other people for what they've done to you. Let go of it. Get rid of that old stuck energy. And then that makes you fresh. That makes you new. And then you can be successful. Then you can be happy. Then you can be at peace. Then you can share your gifts and your talents with other people. So it's a matter of working on it because you know it has to be done. It must be done and you will do it. And not only do you help yourself, you help many others. So one thing that um, he said that I don't know if you may have caught because you may not have been able to hear at that point, but um, when it comes to forgiveness, forg forgiving others, one common misconception is that it's for those people when in actuality, it's for yourself. It's for the person giving the forgiveness to set your, you free from this um, 
this prison around you of this of this situation, this situation's put you in. And you don't even need to tell the other person that you've forgiven them. That's another thing. People don't want to forgive people because they don't want to have to speak to that person again. You don't even have to tell the person. They don't have to know. You're doing it for yourself. It's giving yourself that freedom and that permission. Um, so, you know, I think that's really important to remember is that um, you don't need to, they don't need to be aware of it even. He's so right about the stuck thing. And I think mm -hmm. that's exactly right. Is like re it's it's all about framing it properly. It's the bottom line is that it's not for them. It's for your wellness. It's for mm -hmm. your mental health. It's for your being able to move on and get up in the morning and say, you know, that person can't give me the thing or they don't know the thing or they're not going to make the thing better. And they, I mean, cause you know, some people, they don't care. And it's such a great point is like, they don't know, they don't care. They don't have any earthly idea that they need to be forgiven by you in the first place. Like, I like the idea of getting rid of stuck energy. That's a really simple concept for me to be able to just be like, don't sit on that. That's not worth it. Well, you said this earlier in the show, Mel, um, something about, being empowered through forgiveness. And that's so true because you're taking your power back from this other person actually by forgiving them is you're removing that power and owning it for yourself. Because you're able to say, you know, I'm not letting this feeling for this person have any control over me anymore, no matter what that feeling is. And, you know, if it's a parent or a friend or a workplace situation is that I'm just not going to let that person have that power anymore. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a really good video. I waited to watch the video. So oh. surprise. No, it was a good, I think that was a good, like, <laughs> I think it encapsulated everything. Like, I like the, some of these videos are really cool because these people give these like quick, you know, Cliff's notes versions of, uh, really tough concepts to boil down and then we can actually have good conversations about them. Yeah. I think um, one important thing to remember when you're forgiving others is that sometimes first what you need to do is uncover your anger. And that can be really scary because in our society we're, um, we're taught not to be, not to show our anger um, because it might be too much for some people or we might get out of control or um, maybe it'll make us a bad person. Um, there's all these reasons why we're told to hold our anger in, especially as women, I think. Yeah. That, um, that, but to forgive, to forgive, we need to get in touch with that anger to see what, see what it feels like, what the wrong felt like, what it did to us. And, um, and then, you know, we actually do this in recovery, but, um, Sometimes people suggest making an like an anger um, journal and writing down like mm. everything you can remember from your whole life that made you angry and who did it and what they did and how you felt. And um, uh, we actually do a, a similar thing in recovery. Um, this part of the program that I'm in, um, one of the portions of it is where you, um, make a list of everything that you resent through your whole life, um, which is basically the same thing as being angry about. Um, and, and then you look at what your part was in it. So you're looking at like, what did you contribute? And, um, and by like getting it all out and then looking at your own part in it, you're able to release those feelings do you guys have, have you guys had any experiences like that? I do have an app that I use every day. It's a mood app. Mm -hmm. And that's really helped me track like maybe why I'm angry or frustrated at somebody. Um, and then you can go back and look at that, right? Like throughout, throughout your history. So that's how I kind of track. That's cool. My stuff. The epilepsy.com folks, the epilepsy is, uh, prevention folks have a uh, epilepsy diary and it's a seizure diary but i use it for similar stuff is to like you know um especially because something like diet and stuff like that can matter too but to sort of map like what did i eat and how much coffee did i have that morning and how much sleep did i get the night before and so it's really similar thing and it's easier than ever i think to 
find something that can help you with that, yeah. which is nice. Even if it's like checking in with other people, because we can do that by text once in a while, we can have like limitations where we say, okay, you know, we're going to make sure we check in this many times a week and say something to each other or, you know, something in common here. I don't want to toot our own horn, but I'm going to totally toot our own horn here because Joseph says, Aww, I'm thanks, thanks, Joseph. Thanks, Joseph. And uh, it's because we have people that keep tuning in and that are enjoying this. Yes. Um, I've had friends now reach out to me that are actually in the mental health field as well, who hopefully we're going to see on some future shows coming up and we're going to get some, you know, some of our first friends back. I think it's great because this is how we do do a good job and we do stay thankful for one another and help each other get through this and maybe create our own mood app of our community. I mean, maybe our community can help us with that a little more than, than we're able to now, but that's got to start with each of us. And I think this is great. I, this is why I love it here, but we're very thankful for you guys, Joseph and everybody who has joined us tonight as well. Yeah. Okay. With, the, with the, that being said, next week's episode is about um, kind of the election, election fatigue, um, depression, anxiety, things that people are going through. We will have a therapist or counts and counselor on um, to talk us through those issues. So please tune in next week, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, yeah, we'd love to see you here. Excellent tease. That was very <laughs> good. I love very it. well timed. I and comment to like before the election, guys. So we're gonna do our big uh, baggage claim election special. We're not sure how we're feeling about being around on that Tuesday night of the election because it's gonna be pretty crazy for everyone. Maybe we'll reshow our rap special or something in those lines. Well, we'll keep you posted. If you have yeah. any requests, let us go. For <laughs> sure. It's just Definitely. one other thing I wanted to bring up. This is the last thing. Is um, there's an idea of reframing which um, a lot of people may know what reframing is, but for anyone who doesn't like, or how to use it in this sense, um, you know, like maybe you can't forgive your dad for how he treated you when you were a kid. Like he was, you know, he only yelled at you um, abusively or um, ignored you. And, uh, and so you haven't ever been able to forgive him for that. Um, you know, way of reframing it is to say, you know, maybe my dad's dad only yelled at him and ignored him and um, he didn't have any other parenting model than that. Or maybe my dad had a lot of stress because work was crazy when I was growing up. Or maybe, um, you know, he was brought up to believe that raising kids was the mom's duty and that he didn't need to be a part of it. Or, you know, all these things that don't excuse the behavior. I'm not saying to like excuse it, but it can help you understand it. So then you can, I think empathy was brought up earlier mm -hmm. on the show. Um, that idea of empathizing, and that can sometimes open your heart to to have the will, even if you're not ready to forgive yet, maybe you have the willingness to try to forgive. And that can be an important step along the path is, is that willingness. Um, so reframing. I love that. I like it. That's perfect. It's a perfect place to end on, I think, Julia, because that's exactly right. It's just, I love it. You guys, forgiveness show in the books, yes? Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, everyone. Yeah, I think I think go ahead. Yeah, I was just I was just gonna say that um just like to wrap up <laughs> um you. you know learning how to forgive is not a one step one size fits all process. It's not um it's not it's not simple or easy, but um it's something that takes work but it's worth it for your mental and your physical health. Absolutely. Yes, I would agree. I totally Work on it. I third, I third that emotion. I think that we, we are... concur. <laughs> Huzzah, passed. <and laughs> we just got more done than Congress right there. That's right. All right. All right, you guys, this has been baggage claim and we really appreciate you being Tune here. Tune in next Tuesday at 8 PM. Thank you. Election episode special. Special. Huzzah! Huzzah! Bye, Joseph. Bye, everyone.